Okay, moving right along, we are going to work over the G325A Biographic Information Form. This form is very straightforward, and it's used for a couple purposes. It's used to determine where you've been living, and uh, parents are, and, and the different information around your, your own personal um, information. It's also used to, in interviews, they might ask your spouse questions about your family. And so they would have your parent's name, and they might turn to your spouse, your fiancé, and say, so what's his dad's name and date of birth, and where was he born? And so before you go to an interview, you want to make sure that you know this information on each other's G325A, because it's used for that reason. So here it is. Here's our USCIS website where the form G325A is. And the purpose of form to provide biographic information on an alien, you may... You file this form only as instructed on another immigration application or petition. Okay, previous editions accepted. That's great. Filing fee zero, right? Um, but it says on an alien. Do you also provide biographic information on a citizen as well with this form? But they don't mention that, but that's okay. So we have on our website, of course, a prepared biographic information form. Here it is, a, a G325A. And we're going to start with our petitioner, Timothy Parker. So there's his name, he's a male, his date of birth, citizenship, file number, not applicable, he's a citizen. All of their names used, none. There's his city and country of birth, uh, social security number. You know, on the city and country of birth, we put Flint, and I do put Michigan, the state, USA, it's okay to uh, put that in there. Uh, there's dad's last name, Parker Wade, his date of birth, country of birth if known, city and country, and then um, city and country of residence. And then mother's maiden name, Audrey Smith, her date of birth, city and country of birth, city and country of residence. So this is in an interview, they might reflect on this and ask your partner about your personal information. And so if, if this information's on the form, they expect both of you to know this information about each other. So heads up in an interview, do know this information about each other's parents. Current husband and wife, none, of course, they're fiancés, so they're not married, right? Um, and then former husbands and wife, well, for our petitioner, we have a, a former wife, shipment, Sarah, date of birth, place of marriage, and then date and place of termination of marriage. So they remember, they're going to look at the uh, divorce decree and find this, and they might want to have the marriage certificate to also determine this date. Applicant's residence last five years. Okay, again, you're going to want to know this about one another. So here's his application. This is his uh, information for the last five years. Two residences, okay? Pretty straightforward on that. And then list the present address first. So we're going 2010 to present, right? And then from there, we're backing up 2007 to 2010. And it's good to have the, the you know, this no overlap on here, right? So you live you, there until 7 and here until 7. I mean, if you go 6 and then 7 here, that, that'll, that'll be fine too. But if there's a gap in there, they're going to wonder, like, what is up with that, right? And then... Applicant's last address outside the United States for more than a year. So he had none, right? Um, but if he did have an uh, address outside of the United States, okay, so this is applicant's residence the last five years, he would put the, an out-of-state residence here, and then he would also list it here, an out-of-country residence, right? Applicant's employment last five years, okay? So here he's, he's where he's working now as an accountant, and then Subway before that. And then, um, look, I put a little uh, abbreviation here. Use abbreviations liberally. It's okay um, to get the information in there. And um, occupation abroad, not applicable. And then here, form is submitted in connection with an application for we hit other I-129FK1. They're definitely going to know what we're talking about here. Then you're going to sign it here in blue ink, date it there. And then we reiterate all of the information down here. Now, look at this. If your native alphabet is in other than Roman letters, write your name in your native alphabet below. So, you know, 
obviously we have Roman letters here, but that's going to be an important thing. And, you know, it might take a while to get this form done because, remember, we're filing this with the USCIS here in the United States. This form might need to be sent to India, might need to get sent to Russia to have them fill this in and sent back. So that's going to delay the process. So you want to get these things done and, and logged in that way. Okay. Now, the instructions on the form are on the second page here, so let's go through this. It's really straightforward. You know, complete the form. Uh, US will, USCIS will use this information. Any questions, there's the Privacy Act and the Paperwork Reduction Act. So it's very little information on this. So there is Timothy's. Okay, so now we're going to go to our fiancé, Ann King. Ann, what's your name? King, great. Ann Elizabeth, female, date of birth there right off her birth certificate, nationality Canada, A number, none. She doesn't have one yet, unless she's been petitioned before, and then she might have an A number. But our Ann King has never been in the United States before. All of the names used, nothing here. City and country of birth, Toronto, Canada. USO security number, none. Um, now remember, okay, for in a situation like this, on a woman, right, Ann King is her name, she may use a married name and her maiden name might be here, right? So if she's using a married name up here, then that's when you're going to need the marriage certificate from a previous marriage to make the link that she had used that name, okay? So that's important. That's the time when you might need a marriage certificate in one of these petitions or one of the fiancé petitions. Okay, great. So security, none, okay? Family name of daddy, King, James King, um, there's his birth date, Toronto, Canada, Toronto, Canada, mother, maiden name, there it is, Harrison, Doris, 53, Toronto, Canada, okay, current husband, none, right, former husbands or wives, none for her, and then residence last five years, we have her on Church Street in Toronto, and then Richmond Street in Toronto, and then applicants last address outside the United States for more than one year, same as above, just referencing all that up there. Full name and address of employer for the last five years. The dive bar on Queen Street in Toronto. There she is, a bartender. Since Look at that. I made a mistake. 0005. Ooh. There we go. 2005. And then list, last occupation abroad, if not shown above. Okay. Uh, this one is going to be NA. Not applicable because it is shown above. And then application. Yeah, other. F1 or K-1 fiancé, right there. And then her signature, in blue ink, date, Roman letters, not applicable here, and then King Anne, Elizabeth, and none. So that is it on the G-325.